Hello, everyone, and welcome back. So if you are following along with us, um, you may have noticed that we already configured a private registry in the last section. But uh, a registry on a local host is not of much use if you cannot access through your internet network or your internet network. So if you want that registry to be populated inside your network so that other hosts can also leverage that, you need to make use of TLS. You need to secure it through TLS. So in current video, we would see how we can uh, create a private registry with some customized options uh, like certificates, uh, authori authorization, and how we can secure it through a TLS thing. So just to save some time, uh, we already downloaded the registry software and some random images which we would use to test that thing now let quickly create a directory structure a random directory structure for us where we would uh, put the required certificate and the authentication files after that uh, for authentication you can use a container based approach which we have provided in the note section or you can also use a simple st pass binary if that is configured on your system. So I'm using ST Passability binary. There are some options like uh, encrypting, forcing encryption on the password, then uh, waiting, uh, providing the password on the command line only rather than waiting on the prompt. So let's just uh, print that and uh, an encrypted password is now saved inside your file location. Okay, so the username and encrypted password is there. We will use that encrypted password when we would create a registry server. So that's about the authentication thing. Now, uh, I'm using a simple open SSL command for the certificate signing and certificate creation. So for your environment, you may change some things like uh, the DNS name. It should be the name of your uh, private registry server, the FQDN of a private registry server, then the output file name, maybe you want to change and don't want to use the domain key and the domain CRT and the out file for certificate. Also, uh, this hyphen days option you can change as per your need. For me, I'm putting like a one year certificate. Okay, let's move with the default options. Over here, you have to wait and you have to provide a proper name. So it should be the FQDN of the node where you are running the private registry software. And I'm proceeding with the default email address. Now, okay, so we already created a, basically the keys for us as well. So let's just quickly see. One uh, certificate key is there and one certificate file is there. These are self-signed certificates, so we are using OpenSSL. So we got both the things, authentication thing and the certificate thing. Now, let's quickly uh, execute a docker run command to run a container. This time, please don't freak out. The command would be a bit longer, but I would explain exactly what step is doing. So, if you remember in the previous videos, the docker run is simply used to run the image to create a container. Hyphen D is the detach mode. Restart policy so that in case your docker node restarts or anything bad happened and it came back, the container should automatically restart the name you want to provide to your container. Then the ports you want to expose. So I'm exposing port 443, both the sites, my local system and my container as well, and the image name. Now, notice that we have not covered yet, but when you mount any volume and you provide any volume path, we provide through hyphen V. So simply means storage you can provide through hyphen V and hyphen E for the environment variables. Now, with hyphen V first, uh, we are now mounting the certs which we have created inside the container, inside slash certs path. In the similar manner, the authentication file we are mounting inside slash auth. Then uh, some environmental variables, for example, what would be the registry server address? So it should be in the local host of the container and the port 443, then TLS certificate where it would be residing. So inside that path, what would be the actual file name, then the key, again, that directory and the file name, registry authentication, which file you're using or which method you're using. So we're using ht passwd and this passwd file path name, it should be inside the exact location where uh, you're placing that file so that container can uh, refer that when someone is trying to authenticate. And just a real file uh, are given as per the Docker uh, documentation. So we're just putting a space over here. So just putting it in the quotes. 
that would be a default setting for registry ram now quickly run a content out of that so let's do a docker ps and we can see that a container is running for us now if you want to see what all is running inside the container so the commands are again like the previous ones so just do a df-h and you would notice that the required volumes are being mounted if we simply uh okay ls l maybe do not work over here so if i check asserts you can see the required certificates are already there now quickly um come out of the registry so in this manner our secure registry is now running now how to access that registry but before that let's see if that registry is uh, valid or responsing fine so it's https so we are using hyphen k with the for the 443 port uh, with the curl command now we do not configure any uh, web page fancy web page so it's not running anything but it's not providing any error that means our curl is successfully completing now how you would access that registry server so even on the registry server itself or on the any remote node um, you have to follow the same procedure so inside the docker uh, we would create a directory name search.d and uh, we would create a name of the directory with the same name of the host where we are running the private registry software so this we have created now simply uh, copy the certificate which we have created so okay so it has copied the certificate basically uh, which we've created inside my this directory structure there is nothing but a search directory uh, where you are putting the search for a particular node which is acting as a master and the same procedure will follow on the client as well so this is a uh, now just quickly log into our Docker server, um, Docker private registry basically. So Docker login and uh, the name of the registry server. Okay. Uh, provide the authentication field which we used previous. Okay. So you notice that uh, my login is successful. So from the self node, I'm able to log in successfully. Now let's quickly push an image and on the other node, we will see if we can pull that image successfully. So Docker image. Uh, ls let's pick a simple um, easy image so let me quickly clean that image first so that uh, we will not left with anything from the previous section so docker image tag the name of the image then the name of your private registry and the name of the image again now, if I do a Docker image ls, so you will see that an image with tagged with my registry name is already there. Now, let's quickly Docker push and push that registry. Okay, um, so we made some sort of mistake over here, and uh, okay, that is my mistake. So let me quickly fix that the name of the registry is not correct so these small errors may return blunderous things so just let quickly um put the name okay so the image is pushed now now on the another note we again have to follow the same steps if we want to access that so let's quickly create a directory structure inside there so uh, again inside the docker search or the directory it would not be available by default so you have to create a directory and uh, once it's created, Docker, Docker would simply consider that as certificate point for itself. So again, the private registry directory location. Now, um, just simply use a SCP command so that we can simply copy from the private registry server the same certificate. Providing the password of that node now. Okay, so the certificate is with us now. So. Our login should work. Okay. Okay. So login is successful now. So just remember one thing: in this file, an encrypted entry is created. So every time you will log out and log in, uh, maybe next time it will not ask you for a password. So uh, let me quickly log out to show that thing. Okay. 
I didn't, I logged out and uh, let me do a login again. So you notice that this time we didn't ask you for the passwords because it's picking the credentials from here. So it's not a very secure practice to go with the default stuff. You uh, may use a credential helper to set your credentials. Now, let's just quickly uh, pull that image and see if our pulling is working fine or not. So Docker pull the private registry server name and the node name, which we are using to pull that stuff. Okay, so for Docker image, ls so we can see that the image is now successfully pulled from our docker registry server so in this manner uh, we can configure our private registry server and use it inside our environment so please do practice this and uh, let me know about your feedback and uh, hopefully it should work for you thanks for being such a nice audience have a nice day bye bye